Hi everyone, my name is Albert, one of the co-founders at VectorShift. Today we're going to talk about how to build a receipt reimbursement pipeline. This is a deployment that we recently did with one of our enterprise customers, and we're going to show a redacted version of this pipeline and how we built it in this video. When companies fly out candidates for interviews, so you know that they can meet them in person and conduct you know a string of interviews on site, they often give candidates the ability to reimburse their travel and their meals. And like regular employees, which they have you know, a standard expense management system, these candidates often are not in the system and often are told to take pictures of their receipts and email them to HR, where the HR managers and leaders have to go through receipt by receipt and make sure that all the receipts are compliant within budget and within spend. So for example, they have to make sure that the total travel within you know, Uber's airfare is within $100 or, you know, total food spend is less than $50 and has to be within these timelines, et cetera, right? It's a lot of manual work and across, you know, thousands of interviews. This takes up a lot of time last year. And, you know, we built a pipeline that automates this through VectorShift. Let's head over to the VectorShift platform to talk through how to automate this. What we did for this company is we set up an internal email for the company that Essentially, you know, they're able to forward these emails that they receive from candidates too. And then we extract all the data from the receipts. We store that in a Google sheet and tally up the total spend per category and then send back an email to the HR manager on whether or not the spend is approved and if so, how much. Let's head over to show you how to exactly build this. Whenever you're building a pipeline vector shift that involves repeating the same process among many different receipts in this example or many different items, you want to build a pipeline that's able to handle the situation for exactly you know, one case, or in this case, one receipt. And then you use something called list mode in the platform to loop through each item in a list, for example, a list of receipts to be able to perform that action across all the items. So let's go ahead and build this pipeline for one receipt and how to actually handle it. So this pipeline has to take in one file, right? In this case, the receipt. So let's go ahead and label it as receipt. And a couple of things we want to know from this receipt, right? We want to be able to figure out what category the receipt is from. Maybe it's like food or travel. And we want to extract maybe the vendor name and the total amount spent. So we could process all this data, aggregate it at a high level, and then see whether or not the total spend is within budget or not. So whenever you're categorizing, we have a node called the categorizer node. Let's go ahead and define the categorizer node under AI ops. When I categorize the receipt, you use double curly braces in VectorShift to call variables. And all variables in VectorShift have two parts, the node name, in this case, receipt, and then the field that you want to call, in this case, the process text from the receipt. So we're going to classify the process text from the receipt. And I prepared some text to guide this classifier node, which is has an LLM under the hood doing the classification. I write that you classify the spend into one of three categories, food, travel, or other. And let's fill in the different categories over here. I've also prepared some text to help the LLM understand what's in every category. So for example, food, I've given it an example of you know, a restaurant. Travel, I give an example of airline tickets or Ubers. And for other, I've said all other um, spend that's not food or travel. So this is going to go ahead and classify what the spend is from. And then we need to do one other thing. We need to be able to extract the relevant data from the receipt. So let's go ahead and extract from the receipt again. And we need to extract the total amount and the vendor name. So we're going to find the total amount and the vendor name. And then we're going to give some descriptions of each item to make sure we are handling and giving the LM some context on what to do. Now, let's pass this out via an output node. So we're going to pass out the category that the receipt is classified into. And then we're going to pass out the total amount and the vendor name as well. 
There we go. So just to summarize what this pipeline does, it takes in a singular receipt. We categorize the receipt into either food, travel, or other, and pass it out through the category output node. We take the same receipt. We also extract the total amount and the vendor name, and then we pass it out to the total amount variable and also the vendor name output. Vendor name. All right. Let's go ahead and give this pipeline a name. Process individual receipt. Go ahead and deploy your pipeline. And let's go ahead and make a new pipeline. We're now going to be able to call this pipeline in a loop to be able to process all the receipts attached via an email. So as I mentioned for this deployment, we created an email that allows uh, you know, all the HR managers to forward receipts that they receive from the candidates to, and then they will receive back, you know, an email classifying whether or not the span is reimbursed or not. So whenever you have something in VectorShift that's, we're going to start a pipeline, when something happens, you use a trigger. Let's go ahead and use an email trigger from Gmail. Let's go ahead and say we want when new emails come in from this email. And let's go ahead and select the inbox. So whenever a new email lands in the inbox, we want to start the pipeline to run. Now, um, we want to do a few things here. First, we want to be able to call the pipeline that we just created, process individual receipt on all the attachments from the email. Whenever you do that, you want to turn on list mode, which allows you to take a list of, in this case, file, right? A list of each item, uh, each input in this pipeline so that we could run the same process on every item that's passed in. Let's go ahead and link it to the attachments because the receipts are often placed in the attachments sent in the email. So now we're going to run the pipeline on every item in attachments, and it's going to pass out a list of categories of the spend, a list of the total amount spent, and a list of the vendor names. So a couple of things we need to do here. First, we need to figure out how much is spent in every category. And then we want to see whether or not the total spend per category falls within the limits set by the HR department. Now, this is dependent on what you know the HR department uh, wants and is what requirements that they have. But we're going to do a simple example here, which says, you know, say if the total food is above $50 and the total travel is above $100, we want to say you're over the limit. OK, first. Let's drag out an OpenAI node, and I prepared a prompt that says, you know, re you receive two lists of data describing data from receipts. You know, the two lists represents category of spend. You know, the, the spend category is travel, food, or other, and amount. And I give an example saying the category spend, you know, example of three receipts, food, travel, food, and say it's like $5, $150, and $15. And then I asked this LM to create a summary describing how much was spent per category. So in this case, there's $20 of food and $150 of travel. All right, let's go ahead and connect the category and the amount list from the pipeline. There we go. So now we need to just take this summary Right, and figure out whether or not it's within the limit or of the HR department's requirements or not. So we're going to have another LLM vet the summary to figure out whether or not the spend is within the requirements. I have another prompt that I've pre-written and said, saying that your job is to write a body of a body paragraph an email that says whether the spend is approved. You receive total spend for food and travel. The total approved spend is fifty dollars for food and hundred dollars for travel, and you need to be able to see you know, and say we could reimburse up to the amount that is approved, right? And I give an example, you know, if you have $20 of food spend, $150 of travel, you know, you should be only reimbursing $120, right? Which is $100 of travel up to the $100 limit, and then the total amount spent of food, which is $20. All right, so let's go ahead and connect the summary from the first LLM into the second LLM. As a side note, this is a very common structure when you're 
doing very operational process, you want to chain different LLMs together and break down the process into steps so that the accuracy really improves. You can think about how an LLM is kind of one unit of thinking, and you want to be able to break apart the, that amount of thinking to be able to process individual tasks, which will significantly reduce hallucinations and accuracy and improve accuracy. All right. Now, um, a couple of things. Uh, we first want to be able to send this email back to whoever sent it. So let's go ahead and use a Gmail node. Let's say we want to send a reply. And let's go ahead and send it to the same email that sent the email. So this is the sender email. The body is coming from the, the second LM, OpenAI1. And then the email ID, just to make sure that we're sending it within the same chain that was sent, that sent the original email. There we go. Okay, final thing we have to do is we want to make sure that this data is all recorded nicely in a Google Sheet to make sure that you know, we have a record that everything happened. So I made a Google Sheet that has a couple of columns, the email that's of the person, you know, the vendor name, the category, and the spend. So let's go ahead and you know, use the column list writer, which writes a list of information into a spreadsheet. Let's go ahead and find the spreadsheet called receipt reimbursements. Select the sheet, confirm selection, and then each column within the sheet appears on this Google Sheet node, right? Email vendor category spend, email vendor category spend. Let's go ahead and fill in the list of data right into this node. So let's start actually with vendor. This is coming out of the pipeline node. Category is coming out of the pipeline node as well. Spend is coming out of the pipeline node as well. Now, I need to know, I need to now write this email that sent the email into column A. Now, one thing you're gonna note is that the data type of email ID is text. And I'm looking for a list of text to write a list into column A. So we need to use the duplicate node to duplicate this email, however many receipts we have. Let's say we have three receipts, you know, we need three emails to populate right here, right, of the same email. Um, but we need to make a list out of that. So let's go ahead and, you know, under list ops, use the duplicate node and the item for duplication is the sender email. And then the list size to match is what's coming out of here, which is effectively the number, the number of receipts that we received. And then we're going to connect this into the email field. There you go. The final thing you have to do is deploy the pipeline to make sure that it's able to run. I've already gone ahead and prepared a sample and say I have a dinner receipt and a travel receipt and let's go ahead and send it and let's see what happens. There we go. We have the receipts extracted. So we, you know, we have United Airlines for $300, you know, food for 50.75. So both categories are above the limit and we should be reimbursed for $150. Let's go ahead and check the email again. And there we go. You know, we're saying it's over the limit for both categories and the total reimbursement is $150. Amazing, hopefully this was helpful. Thank you very much for your time.